Good afternoon, Canotians. Good afternoon, Canotians. In a few minutes, we'll be starting our event. We'll be starting our event. Before we officially start, before we officially start, let me first remind me you first of remind our you event of netiquettes. Our event netiquettes. Make sure to make sure your microphone your microphone throughout the session, throughout the session to avoid unnecessary to avoid unnecessary distractions during the, meeting. the meeting. If possible, if possible, turn on your camera on so we can feel your presence in the online setting. Listen and be attentive. Participate if there are activities and answer the questions given to you. If you have clarifications or questions during the discussion, write them down first and wait for the Q&A session. So let me repeat the event netiquettes again. First, make sure to mute your microphone throughout the session to avoid unnecessary distractions during the meeting. Second, if possible, turn on your cameras so we can feel your presence in the online setting. Third, listen and be attentive. If there are activities and answer, and if there are activities and answer the given questions to you. If you have clarifications or questions during the discussion, Write them down first and wait for the Q&A session. We hope that you will enjoy the Canotian Crusaders Sailing Through Inclusivity and Discovery webinar. Again, we would like to request everyone to please change their displayed names into their nicknames here in this Zoom meeting.
Good day, everyone. We hope you had a good lunch and a happy lunch afternoon. Happy My afternoon. name is Jewel Ferrer. And I am Maggie Panganiban, your fellow Voyagers for today's event. So before we start, let us first find out what we'll be tackling for this event. That's a good idea! Kaya naman for today's video, una muna nating alamin kung ano ang Kanotian Crusaders, sailing through inclusivity and discovery webinar with the theme, Lipunan at Kalusugan, Daan sa Ligtas na Pangumuhay ng Sambayanan. This webinar is a collaboration of the Student Welfare and Development Committee and the Partnerships and Advocacy Committee that aims to help the Kenosians to discover kung ano nga ba ang kanilang ipinaglalaban para sa bayan, para sa kalikasan at lalong-lalo na para sa bansa. We hope na masasagot namin yung mga tanong at inquiries nyo. Pero stop! Wait a minute! Kami muna ang una magtatanong sa inyo. Kabataang Kenosiano? Ano ang inyong pinaglalaban? Type your answers and send it to everyone for us to know kung ano ang abisyon ng ating mga junior high schoolers. Wait lang, Jewel. Ikaw ba? Ano ang iyong ipinaglalaban? Actually, nakalagay na naman sa slide. Pero pinaglalaban ko yung kabataan, syempre. As the coming generation, kailangan maging ready na din tayo sa mga uh, kailangan... Kailangan maging aware na din tayo sa mga ating karapatan at kailangan natin i-utilize kung paano natin magagamit ang ating boses for the for our future. Ikaw ba, Maggie? Anong pinaglalaban mo? Siyempre ako, ipinaglalaban ko din ang aking kapwa kabataan at siyempre ipinaglalaban ko din ang aking pamilya kasi kung di dahil sa kanila, wala ako dito ngayon, di ba? Napaka-deep naman yan. Pero wala pa ako nakikitang magsagot. Wala bang pinaglalaban ng kabataan ka na Oh guys, kaya niyo po yan. Send your answers sa chat box, guys. Okay, so may natanggap na ako isa from Trina. Ang aking pinaglalaban ay ang karapatan ng mga bata makapagsalita ng sarili nilang opinion. Yes, I agree. Actually, yan din yung pinaglalaban ko as I have said earlier. Magandang pinaglalaban yan. Any more? Okay, so wala pang nagsisend sa chat box. Tapos wala rin nag-direct uh, message sa amin. So, Ay, Maggie! Ayun. Wait! May natanggap pa ako isang message. From, Ay, from Alex. Ayun. Ang pinaglalaban naman ni Alex ay laban para sa kalikasan at kalusugan. Laban para sa ikauunlad ng bayan. Very true and very deep. Tama po yan. Tama po yung pinaglalaban niyo. Keep up the good work. Ayan, we also have here from Ava. Ayan, dumadating na, dumadating na yung mga answers nila. So, from Ava, I believe what I am fighting for is my future and my family. What I am working hard for now is for my future self to have a wonderful life. In addition, I hope that my future self helps others as well. Grabe, napaka-selfless mo naman. And I also like how you expressed your answer in English. Grabe. Sobrang skillful mo naman. And we also have here from Denise, ang aking pinaglalaban ay ang katotohanan para sa magandang kinabukasan ng bayan. Totoo yan. And I shall read the last entry from Princess para sa kalikasan. Me too. Wow, za, BFF. Narinig mo yun? Nakakahanga na kahit mga kabataan pa tayong lahat dito. We already have a vision ng ating mga gustong makamit. 
alam mo, isa din talaga ako sa humahanga sa mga kasagutan nyo. And this only proves how smart and dedicated the youth really is. And we'd really love to read all of your entries, but unfortunately, we couldn't due to limited time. But don't worry, we'll be saving your answers to make sure that it is well appreciated by the council. Now that we know the aspirations of our Kabataang Kanushano, let us now officially start the advocacy webinar entitled Kenoshan Crusaders, Sailing Through Inclusivity and Discovery Webinar. To formally deliver our opening remarks, we have our very excellent Ms. Yanni Brion, the Partnerships and Advocacy Chairperson. Let us give her a virtual round of applause. A pleasant afternoon, my dear Voyagers of Change. It is my great pleasure and honor to officially welcome you to the last day of the Kenosian Crusaders Sailing Through Inclusivity and Discovery webinar. Indeed, it is a great privilege to speak on behalf of the whole event organizers and counselors to share with you the concept and ideas behind this event. Kenosian Crusaders, is an advocacy webinar that was first created with the goal of enlightening the youth about different advocacies that anyone could possibly fight for. We want to deliver a message of urgency that our land needs you. Our land needs your youth and your voices. And of course, there were a lot of challenges, especially questions that arise if this would even be possible. But once again, we have been gathered here today in one Zoom meeting, ready to learn about our what and whys about ourselves. Likewise, I want the youth to be empowered to sail through this ocean of change and be the crusaders of this ocean. There will be multiple routes and barriers along the way, but always remember that your will and thirst for global change will serve as your pillar and inner compass to steer you on the right path way back to your main course. Let us not wait for the youth to be the hope of our nation. Rather, let us be part of the youth sector that all have been waiting for. Let us keep that inner child within us, curious, idealistic, and spontaneous. Lose not our spark, and together, let us continue being the inspiring bearers of hope for the future. Thank you so much, Miss Yanni Brion. I'm very sure na hindi lang ako ang na-empower sa iyong pangmalakasang opening remarks. And I really like how you emphasize the root of this advocacy webinar. From what I heard from you earlier, your main goal is really to call the youth and use their voices because una sa lahat, isa ka sa naniniwala sa kakayahan nila. You know that people like us are capable of being an instrument for change. Talagang nakikita ng lahat ang iyong strong desire for the youth to be involved in this journey of change for a better tomorrow. For sure, Vebs. Kabog na kabog talaga yung choice of words ni Ate Yane eh. Now, allow us to bigyan kayo ng konting energy at kaunting kaya. Actually, not kaunti. We hope to provide as much as we can. Ikisingin muna namin ng mga diwa nyo with a mini game. For sure, friendship talagang may energize sila dito kahit virtual lang to, no? So, we will be playing Sinech Ite. So, I'm guessing that you already have an idea based sa ating game title. Pero if wala, don't you worry. We will be explaining our game mechanics. Okay, so now for our mechanics. We will be flashing blurred pictures of movie or series characters from famous Tagalog, Korean, and English shows and movies. While the picture is being shown, one of us will be describing the characters to serve as a clue. You'll only be allowed to raise your hand after hearing the word go. The first participant to raise his or her hand will be the one to answer once called. Make sure to also indicate the movie slash series title together with the name of the character. Ayan, mukha naman clear yung uh, explanation ni Maggie. And the participant who accumulates the highest points will be receiving 50 pesos via GCash or load. Ganon, Get your game on! Handa na ba kayo? 
Pero, bago natin simulan ang laro, atin munang itest or sumubok ng isang tanong para matiyak na naintindihan ng lahat. For our trial question, si Netch Ite. Ito siyang doktor na mayroong isang anak na lalaki at cheating husband. At naniniwala siya sa kasabihang papunta pa lang tayo sa exciting part. Si Netch Ite. Your hands at 3, 2, 1, go! Wala bang nakakakilala sa inyo dyan? Diyos ko, usang-usa yan ngayon. Ay, may nag-chat na. From Alex, Doc Jill, ay incomplete. Kailangan, ipak- Kailangan niyo din ilagay yung name ng series. So, try again, Alex. Huwag kayo masyado kabahan. Trial pa lang to. Mamaya na kayo kabahan. Uh, as much as possible, pwede, pwede kayo mag-raise hand instead the chat para parinig din namin yung mga bosses niyo. Okay, so wala bang gusto mag-raise hand dyan? Hindi mo siya kilala? Okay, ito, galing kay Jill. Doc J, The Broken Marriage. Ito, counted na ba to? As tama, Maggie? Oh, counted. Complete naman, complete. Okay, so that's how the game works. And ayun, Maggie, go. Okay, so pwede na tayo mag-start. Okay, so for our question number one. Sinetch ite. Siya ang ambisyosang kapatid na hindi daw favorite ni Mama. Isa siyang New Yorker at hindi siya marunong magluto. Si Netch Ite. One, two, three, go! Raise your hands. Okay, so meron ang nauna. Wait lang, anong, anong name? DJN. Okay, so can you please unmute, unmute your microphone? Bobby. Incomplete answer. Alam mo bang kung saan mo? May nag-chat sa akin, Maggie. Ito naman, si Alex. Tama yung sagot niya. Uh, pakita natin ang answer. Okay, sige. Go. Answer reveal na tayo. Tama yung sagot ni Alex. It is Bobby Salazar from Four Sisters and a Wedding. Okay, question two. Isa siyang mayaman na matanda and he enjoys playing games. Meron nga lang siyang brain tumor kaya hindi na ganun katalas ang kanyang memorya. Sinetch it day. Three, two, one, go! Ilalan niyo pa ba siya? Okay, so naka-raise hand si Jel. Okay, Jel, what is your answer? I believe this person is all ilang from Squid Game. So, o tama nga ba ang all ilang from Squid Game? Maggie, i-reveal mo ng answer. So, tama nga. Okay, congratulations. And now for our next question. Sinetch Ite, isa siyang dating psychologist na nabaliw ng dahil sa pag-ibig. Grabe na ba yun? Former jowa siya ni Joker. Sinetch Ite. One, two, three, go! Ikaw po, Maggie. Tanong ko lang. Curiosity lang. Nabaliw ka na ba sa pag-ibig? Tinatanong pa ba yan? Siyempre hindi. Ikaw ba? Ah, kasi... I like to say na hindi. Hindi naman ako ganun ka loka para pumunta ng ganun. So, wala ba sasagot? <laughs> Pero ang totoo talaga na baliw na si Jewel. Joke lang. Walang laglagan, Maggie. <laughs> <laughs> Pero ano na, guys? Raise hands. Send your answers. Ayan. Okay. So, ang unang nag-raise hand ay si DJ N. Ulet. So, can you please unmute your microphone? Harley Quinn. Okay, incomplete yung answer mo. Would you like to try again? Harley Quinn. Jewel, parang may kulang talaga. 
parang may kulang. Ano kaya yun? Okay, so, tawag na tayo ng iba. Ang nakita ko na Grace Hand kanina ay si Jel. Jel, would you like to try? Uh, I believe it's Harley Quinn from Birds of a Prey. Okay, so, is it Harley Quinn from Birds of Prey? You got it right! Okay, congratulations for getting the answer right. Next question, please. Ito namang character na to. Isa siyang anak na may tuturing nating marites dahil sa kanyang malakas na pandinig. Sana all talaga. Nagbibigay kasi ako ng isa. May gusto siya sa isang lalaki, pero hindi siya gusto pabalik. Pero ang gusto kasi ng lalaki yung pinsan ng babae. So, finish it, eh. 3, 2, 1, go! Ay, actually, before mag-go, nagtaas na si Chef. Pero since nagtaas siya, before mag-go signal, we will give this to Sab. Sab, what is your answer, please? Dolores from Encanto. Um. Is it Tama Dolores nga ba ang Dolores from Encanto? from Encanto? Let us see. Okay, tama ang sagot ni Sab. Congratulations and Maggie for our last question. Okay, so maghanda na kayo. For this last question, is a siyang blondie na popular girl in school na parte ng grupong The Plastics at naniniwala sa kasabihang On Wednesdays, we wear pink. Tinech ite. Bako ako yan, Maggie. Blonde kasi ako. Pero hindi nga lang ako popular. Pero baka ako yan. Baka lang naman. Huwag kang feeling. Hindi ka kasali dyan. Okay. So, one, two, three, go. Raise your hands. Hindi niyo ba siya kilala? Ayan, okay. So, unang nag-raise hand si Chef. So, Chef, would you like to try? Uh, Regina George. Regina George. Hmm. Close yet hindi. <laughs> okay, so I'd like to call Ava. Ava, would you like to try an answer? I believe it is Gretchen Winners from Mean Girls po. Nako, hindi rin. Sino pa? Sino pa yung isa? Isa na lang. None of the above daw po. <laughs> Ayan, may isa pa. Okay, I'd like to call Riza. Karen Smith from Mean Girls. Is it Karen Smith from Mean Girls? Please reveal the answer. So, you got it right. Napakaganda ng taste mo sa movie. And now, we have finally concluded our icebreaker. Please let us know if you guys enjoyed our game through a show of hearts. Patingin naman ang heart reactions nyo, guys. Okay, so madami ako nakitang hearts. Thank you for the hearts. And we'll be announcing the winner at the end of the event. So stay tuned kung sino nga bang mananalo ng mainam at pinagpala na 50 pesos. Okay, so now let us move on to the make and up for today. Kung na-excite kayo sa icebreaker, I am sure na mas may excite pa kayo para sa ating talk for today. So, sis, ipakilala mo na ang ating speaker number one. Thanks, sis, pagpapakilala, pagbigay ng opportunity sa akin, ipakilala ang ating speaker number one. Our speaker for today is the Plastics Campaign Associate for Gaia Asia Pacific, working closely with Gaia member countries in influencing systems to phase out single-use plastics and sachets and reducing plastic pollution at the source. She has worked with the Philippine Environmental Ministry and various ecological and human rights groups in the Philippines and Asia. Her thematic areas of expertise are climate, extractives, and the plastics crisis. Before her professional work in the development sector, she was a grassroots volunteer organizer for about five years in a humanitarian organization and seven years in a local environmental movement. 
In her spare time, she mentors youth and environmental volunteers and works on opening a zero waste store on her, in her own town. Grabe. Description pa lang yun, ha? So, ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Miss Karel Pilora and give her a warm round of applause. Hi, um, good afternoon, everyone. Okay. And all right. Um, so good afternoon. Um, once again, uh, well, yung topic na binigay sa akin was um a bit broad, which is environment. And just a disclaimer na I'll be pre presenting about plastic pollution basically because it's um it's what my role is. Um I'm the plastic campaigner for our organization and because it's it's the advocacy that um the Global Alliance for Incinerator Alternatives is working on. But environment is actually a very broad topic. So plastic pollution, if we want to talk about the environmental crisis, is an element lang siya sa buong spectrum ng environment. So we have other environmental themes, which are um, renewable energy, uh, mining, um, climate justice, oceans. Uh, marami pang ibang thematics or field of study or issues na pinag-uusapan when we talk about um, the environmental crisis, lalo-lalo na sa Pilipinas. Okay, um, next slide. All right. Um, so before I start, just so I know how you guys appreciate, um, just to level off, um, maybe you can chat or uh, wanna, if you want to raise your hand and like unmute and um, the, give us the word that comes to your mind when you hear the term climate change. Uh, pili lang kayo, one word. Um, you can drop it in the chat or you can also share it with us. Sige, I'll, I'll give you guys a few seconds to... Uh, drop the word that comes to your mind when you hear climate change. All right. Um, we have one word, carbon. But Pollution, extreme weather conditions, global warming, changes of the earth, weather, temperature rises, temperature change. All of those are very accurate. Hmm, anyone else? Long term. Sige, while the others are dropping the word that's come that's in their mind, maybe I can ask Maggie. Uh, what did you say, like, uh, extreme weather conditions? Uh, extreme weather conditions because, ano po, uh, nagpapapalit-palit po yung weather natin when it comes to climate change. Biglang umiinit, biglang lumalamig, then sometimes mm -hmm. po kapag, ka, halimbawa, mainit, bigla biglang umuulan, so that's why I said extreme weather conditions po. Kung baga po kasi nag-iiba-iba po talaga yung weather when it comes to climate change. Thank you. Uh, okay. You have consumerism, emergency. Uh, princess, can you share your thought? Uh, hello po. I believe po na climate change is an emergency since uh, urgent po, sa, po siya na contemporary issue sa ating uh, mundo and ayun nga po if hindi po siya maagap maagapan po sa uh, maagang panahon then it would be too late for us to create a change po yeah that's true according to the inter uh, international panel 
uh, on climate change. So every year, may nilalabas silang report on the status of climate change. So like a few years ago, they said that we have 11 years uh, uh, until we reach natin yung 1.5 degrees uh, na global warming. Uh, and dun magsisimula yung uh, sea level rise and uh, slowly ang um, survival of humanity um, uh, aabot tayo sa point of no return. So mahihirapan na talaga tayong i-alleviate yung climate change. So that was few years ago. Um, the current report says we probably have two, three years left. So it's definitely, definitely uh, an emergency. Okay, so thank you for um, sharing your thoughts. Again, next slide tayo. Okay, so this one naman, what comes to your mind when you hear about plastic pollution? Sige, one word ulit. Sige. I'll wait for your answers. Pero habang wala pang sumasagot, I'll just call on some people. Hmm. Gillian? Ah, did I pronounce it right? Can you share like one word that that comes to your mind when you hear about plastic pollution? Does it have to be anything fancy? Can we have Gillian? See, Pomis. Sorry, ano yun? Dagat po, si. Ah, alright. Yeah. True. Sa so, dagat naman, pumupunta lahat na uh, majority of uh, the plastic trash that we have. Uh, Kayla? Can you share us a word? Mm, okay, I am. Uh, we have a chat negligence, deaths of animals, especially sea creatures. Mm, plastic persists. Yeah, that's true. Poor waste management, harmful. Come on. Rian, why are you saying that it's common? Can you share with us what's on your mind? Um, the first word that came to my mind when I heard about plastic pollution is that it is one of the most common pollution or common problem in our world today and is most likely most likely in the generation today now that the people have consumed and created a lot of plastic and it has gone out to the different parts of the world and it has already took um, a great amount of uh, disturbance and harmful effects in our surroundings. Thank you. Yeah, uh, that's actually very accurate. Um, uh, we also have here toxic. Yeah, yeah, long term. All right. Okay, we can go to the next slide.
All right. So just a few numbers. Um, researchers estimate that we have more than 8.3 billion tons of plastic. So that is a lot, a lot. Um, and then 60% of the plastic has ended up in either a landfill or the natural environment. So 60% to 8.3 billion uh, are still around us. So uh, we weren't able to get rid of them. And hindi rin sila nag-decompose. They're just coexisting with human beings right now. Next. All right, so 8.3 billion tons is um, a very big number. Uh, so if we put it in something na uh, maintindihan natin, so that's 25,000 Empire State buildings. So ganun siya kadami. Or 1 billion na elephants. So that's how heavy and that's how massive it is. Next. Okay, so where did the world's plastic go? So, sa lahat na pinuproduce natin na uh, plastic trash, um, saan sila napupunta? So, only 9% of those plastic trash are recycled. So, um, a lot of companies say na they're handling their waste. Um, governments lagi nilang um, ini-endorse or ina-advertise that they have recycling facilities um, dahil yun ang nakikita nilang solution. Uh, and that is the reason na nakikita nila why people should allow them to continue producing more plastic kasi dinajustify nila na nire-recycle naman daw nila. But in reality, um, the global data says only 9% ang nire-recycle. So that's a very, very small portion of what we are producing. And then 12% of those are burned or incinerated which means that the chemicals or the toxics that are existing in the plastic materials ay napupunta sa air or sa environment natin. And then 79% of those trash are just thrown. So they are still existing in the, somewhere in the planet and hindi pa rin sila nagde-decompose because it takes one plastic item a thousand of years Bago ito mag, um, uh, before we can fully get rid of it. Next. Oh, yeah. Here's a sample. So, plastic can take 500 years to biodegrade um, in the ocean, where there's a lot of, um, uh, how do you say that, uh, elements working on its decomposition. So, yung, sorry, yung cigarette butt, uh, yung pinakamatagal, Okay, so ilan sa mga pinakamatagal mag-decompose or may pinakamaraming composition of the trash? Uh, well, the biggest are the fishing line and then the cigarette butts um, and the plastic grocery bag because it's very thin. So mas nauna silang mag-decompose. Uh, and then we have the styrofoam cups the aluminum cans, uh, yung beverage holder, like pag marami yung drinks mo, um, uh, that's uh, usually served in cafes when you um, take out your drinks. Uh, we have the diapers, the pet bottles or the plastic bottles, and then the fishing lines, which are usually made of nylon. Next. Uh, 
Ayun. So, isa sa mga pinaka-persistent or pinaka-prolific or pinaka-mabilis na trash na napoproduce uh, are the single-use plastic products because they are very convenient. So, yung sachets, yung, um, yung packaging ng candy, um, those are all single-use plastic. But here are some other examples or types. We have the pet bottles. Ito yung nilalagyan ng soda. We have the uh, HDPE bottles. Um, basically, they are considered um, reusables, but still, they are made of plastic. We have the uh, tinatawag natin plastic bags. Uh, we have the um, yung bags ng chips, which uh, have a certain kind of film or aluminum film. And then we have the cutlery, uh, plates, cups, and then the EPs, um, protective packaging, yung hot drink cups. So this... The problem with single-use plastics, um, bakit ito yung laging hina-highlight in Congress and uh, in different policies, and then bakit ito yung pinapush ng mga uh, groups working on plastic pollution na we have to get rid of them, it's because we only use them for a few minutes. Like, let's say, dalawang minuto lang natin silang gagamitin. Then we're gonna throw them because a lot of them are not reusable. Uh, and then they're gonna stay in our environment as waste for a very long time. So if we look at uh, that angle, um, it's, it's only convenience that is stopping us from getting rid of this um, single-use plastic products. Uh, and then just before 1960s uh, or early 1970s, hindi pa nai-invent itong plastic products and people were okay about it. We had alternatives, we used um, more traditional packaging, and that is something that we can strive to have again. Next. Um, yeah, so uh, some items that uh, dominate ocean garbage. So number one talaga yung plastic bags. And then um, others na parang hindi pa natin na mention before. Uh, we have the wrappers, yung synthetic rope. Uh, fishing items like the nets are usually made of nylon, which is made of plastic. Uh, glass bottle, bottles and then drink cans. Next. All right. So, why talk about plastics? It's because sa entire life cycle ng plastic, it produces environmental pollution. So, uh, the source of material itself is made of fossil fuels. It's made of oil and gas. So, sa start pa lang ng production ng plastic, we're already contributing to global warming and to climate change. Um, and then we have the manufacturing stage, which produces a lot of pollutants as well. Um, international trade, we are, have the consumption where uh, nag exist na yung product. Uh, so, even if people, like let's say, say no, like, Kahit hindi, kahit mag-say no ka to, to a plastic straw. Uh, like for example, may dala kang reusables, metal straws, uh, pumunta ka ng cafe, and then hindi ka kumuha ng plastic straw. It does not mean that that is one less plastic straw from the environment because nandun na yung plastic straw na yun, hindi mo lang ginamit. Uh, at some point, gagamitin din yun yun, ng, yun ng ibang tao. Or even if hindi siya magamit, it's gonna go to a landfill because it's already there. So, uh, that's why it's important um, 
uh, in our organization, we always highlight it na we should focus on reduction, um, producing less plastic. Because if it's already produced, then it's already in the environment. Uh, others, uh, yung downstream stages naman ng life cycle of plastic, we have the waste management and then we have the cleanup. Uh, usually, yung mga governments natin, lagi sila nang nagpo-focus on uh, consumption, waste, uh, management, and then the cleanup uh, without really um, emphasizing on the first three stages or even on stage one. Uh, which is a bit problematic. So, um, ayun, I just wanted you guys to understand na um, sometimes it's not really the consumer uh, per se, pero it's the producer's uh, responsibility to, in the first place, produce less plastic. Because kahit anong recycle and kahit anong linis natin ng environment natin, uh, if we're still producing the same amount of plastic, then it's just going to add up. Uh, and there will be no improvement or it is not a real solution because um, we are not reducing our plastic production. Next. All right. So nowhere is the need for action greater than in Asia. So 80% of the plastic that ends up in the world's oceans are basically produced or sourced in Asia. Next. Okay. So, punta naman tayo sa Pilipinas. Um, the numbers are actually pretty staggering. Um, hindi naman tayo mag-quiz, so um, uh, you don't have to memorize this. But basically, these very, very big numbers show us na since um, uh, yung data, uh, this data starts from 2012, uh, and then we have 2016, and we have, um, we have a projection for 2025. So from 37,000 tons per day, per day on, not, not even a year, um, we are going to be producing 77,000 tons by 2025. So that's, uh, that really shows us na uh, yung Pilipinas, hindi tayo papunta sa point na we are addressing climate change or we are taking care of the environment. Dahil nakikita natin, the numbers tell us na we are still um, going in a trend or developing as a country na nagpo-produce pa rin tayo ng sobrang daming plastic, even by 2025. Uh, and one of the points here, uh, it says that the Philippines uh, is uh, the third largest contributor of marine plastic pollution. So uh, every year, um, and then we have a very big contribution to plastic entering the oceans. So that is very sad. Um, but later, may tindihan natin na it's not uh, yung historical background on why we became um, one of the largest contributors. Uh, and then in the last point here, um, understanding the links of plastic, especially sachets. Uh, to poverty and colonialism. So yeah, maybe we can find it out in the next slide. Uh, all right. So, nakikita natin dito na Philippines, um, uh, in terms of rivers, uh, na nag, um, naglilid or na nagdadivert ng uh, plastic waste to the oceans. Uh, ang pinakamarami, it says here, is the Pasig River. So makikita, na, alam naman natin how polluted Pasig River is. So in the context of poverty, colonialism, bakit Pasig River ang isa sa mga rivers with the biggest contribution to, to plastic waste in the ocean? It's not really dahil um, 
dahil dun dumadaan ang ano ang trash it's because the Pasig River um along Pasig River are a lot of crowded areas a lot of poor communities uh which have very little access to um proper waste management so most of these poor communities they purchase a lot of uh, a lot of sachet products uh because it's convenient and then if because it's cheap dahil yun yung afford nila so sometimes we say that the solution is for us to buy bulk dahil reusable yung container kapag bumili ka ng malaki but then not everyone in the philippines especially um those who earn uh, a daily wage uh yung binibili nila ay yung pang-araw-araw lang so bibili nila sila ng konti dahil today ito lang yung afford nila hindi nila afford bumili ng para sa isang buwan na stock because they earn a living uh under daily wage So sa isang araw, yun lang yung ipagbabudget nila. So bibili sila ng isang sachet lang ng shampoo, kunyari. Uh, and then that's what they're gonna consume for the day. And then tomorrow, kung may pambili sila ulit, ibibili sila ulit. So that's why um, ginagamit ng mga big companies in advertising uh, na affordable yung products nila. When in fact, pinag pinag-divide lang nila ng pakonti-konti and then nilagay lang nila sa sachet. So, at the end of the day, it's all about marketing. It's not really the fault ng mga poor families na hindi nila afford because kaya lang naman ng mga big corporations or let's say, let's say, um, it's Palmolive. Uh, kaya ni Palmolive mag, magbigay ng uh, parang refill stations so that Um, these families can buy ng pakonti-konti lang. But they don't do that. They put it in in plastic sachets, which is uh, problematic. So, nasa kanino yung solution? It, is, it, uh, is it the burden of the families na hindi nila afford, burden ba nila na kailangan nilang bumili ng, uh, ng malaking products? just to save the environment or is it uh, or does the burden have to fall to these bigger companies who can actually afford to give us uh, alternatives so at the end of the day it's a systematic problem na nagko-contribute yung mga kumpanya nito dahil mas pina-prioritize nila yung profit kaysa sa sustainability and next All right. So talking about accountability and the different companies, um, uh, the movement Break Free from Plastic, which Gaia is also a member of, um, had uh, brand audits. So when we say brand audit, magka clean up kayo. Tapos hindi na nat- hindi don natatapos yung trabaho. So lahat ng nakuha yung trash, you're gonna audit it. And identify sino yung mga brands na pinaka nagpo-produce ng basura. Uh, so, we had um, six years of uh, uh, working on brand audits or probably more. And these are the top polluters na naging result ng report na yun. So, we have Coca-Cola. We have Pepsi. Unilever, Nestle, Procter and Gamble, Mondelez, uh, Philip Morris, Danone, Morris Incorporated, and then Colgate Palmolive. So these are the top polluters um, globally. Uh, and tandaan niyo itong mga companies na to because these are very rich companies. And uh, once again, they are they are the companies who can afford to give us alternatives. Pero mas pinipili nilang uh, gumamit ng plastic products because it's convenient and it's cheaper for them. Kahit na alam nila yung status ng climate natin ngayon is very, very fragile. Next. All right. So 
um, we have been calling the government uh, calling the government out to investigate these polluters and kung ano yung pwede nating uh, ma-ask from them so that they can contribute uh, to us addressing climate change and addressing the plastic pollution. So hindi lang ito actually, uh, this one is in the Philippines, but this is also being done all over the world. Um, so different groups are um, calling for these polluters to be held accountable. Next. Correct. <clears throat> so from the different corporations, uh, punta naman tayo sa different governments who are contributing to um, to the Philippines being uh, one of the top polluters. So there is what we call a plastic waste trade. So it 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 means na different countries. Um, mostly rich countries from the global north. Uh, let's say, for example, Germany, uh, U.S. Yung basura nila, um, pinapadala nila sa mga Asian countries or countries to the global south uh, under, under the label of um, recyclables. So, let's say yung basura ni US, ipapadala niya sa Pilipinas uh, para i-recycle daw. When in fact, in the Philippines, wala naman masyadong recycling facilities. So, hindi na recycle yung basura na pinapadala ni US. And then, natatambak lang sa Pilipinas. And then, if you audit the waste of the Philippines, edi mas marami because compared to US, dahil pinadala na nila yung basura nila na, nila dito sa atin. So that is what we call um, the waste trade. So isa rin yung issue on plastic and and waste na Gaia is working on. And then it's it's not in the Philippines lang. As you can see in the list, um, these are countries kung saan pinapadala yung trash from the global north. So we have Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam, Indonesia, Myanmar, uh, Philippines, Singapore, uh, Lao People's Democratic Republic, Cambodia, Brunei. Uh, so these are countries na tumatanggap ng basura uh, because um, they think it's economic, because the governments allow it. So, hindi lang mga big corporations ang kailangan natin kausapin, but also our governments na dapat hindi inaalaw yung ganito. Because it's contributing, if iisipin natin, pag nag-climate change, yung mga countries na apektado ng disasters are mostly Asian countries. It's mostly these countries. We have Malaysia, Vietnam, uh, Indonesia has a very um, vulnerable envir uh, uh, vulnerable environment na uh, Philippines. Uh, Singapore is a small island uh, and also Cambodia. So kapag na global warming and kapag nag sea level rise, ito yung mga countries na unang maapektuhan. Tapos sila pa yung pinapadalhan ng more and more basura. So if bumaha and then kumalat itong basura, matatabunan na lang yung Pilipinas. Next. Uh, yeah, so uh, not gonna focus on this much. Um, but on the last bullet point, we have the false solutions or greenwashing. So, uh, like for example, si Unilever, kapag kinol out mo sila, eh di mapapahiya sila na nagpo-produce sila ng maraming basura. So, in return, they're, they're, gonna, they're gonna tell the public na mag, uh, gagawa sila ng solution about it, pero a lot of those solutions are actually greenwashing. So, let's say, um, yung mga yung mga echo bricks na naririnig nyo that's made of plastic, um, yung mga pagsusunog 
uh, uh, para gawing fuel, um, those are some uh, tinatawag namin false solutions because it allows the production, the continued production of plastic. So, hindi niya tinitigil yung production. Sinasabi niya lang na if you produce more plastic, okay lang because we can do something about it. When in reality, ang goal natin dapat is to reduce production. Uh, next. Uh, yeah, next. All right, so how can the public and youth participate and push forward um, plastic reduction efforts? Next. Uh, all right, so ang um, first is to really get involved so uh, and let your voice be heard. So there are a lot of campaigns, there are a lot of um, organizations who are working on the issue or basically um, trying to save the environment and trying to stop climate change. So ang una is to just really get involved. Um, kapag may mga panawagan, uh, share it on social media, um, uh, get creative about it, um, pwede kayong maglagay ng tarps outside your home just so passerbys can, can see it. So, yeah, um, get creative, use your gifts, use your talent, um, ang, ang, riga, ang gift talaga ng youth is your energy and your time. So you have that a lot going on with you. Um, so you can share it uh, to society and take part sa mga ganitong initiatives. It's not, you know, it's not a lot of work. Um, magsusulat ka lang naman and then magsushare. But you don't know uh, kung sinong person yung, you're having an impact to. Yeah, next. All right, so this one is from Indonesia. So they created a plastic museum from all the waste audits that they made. So lahat ng basura na napulot nila, nilinis, and then the display. And then it's like you're walking in a world of trash. So um, yeah, this was covered um, in international media. And it's something that we are very proud of. Um, because the group that worked on it uh, ay isang member ni Gaia. Next. Okay, number two is basically uh, walking the talk. Um, if you want to talk about trying to save the environment, um, then try to, you know, live that lifestyle. Um, try to... Uh, find alternatives kahit sa bahay nyo lang, kahit sa personal na choices mo lang. Uh, uh, um, you know, um, letting go a bit of convenience and trying to bring an echo bag every time na lumalabas ka para hindi ka na mag, hindi ka na mag plastic bag or hindi ka na kailangan um, you know, kumuha ng plastic packaging. Uh, if one person does that, uh, like for example, ganun yung mindset ng kada tao, then you don't know if it's, you know, a million people thinking or doing it. It's gonna create a big impact already. Next. Uh, yeah. Ah, okay, so number two, um, other than the lifestyle change and, you know, um, yung pagtangkilik sa mga zero-waste stores, pag-support sa kanila, uh, it's also about educating yourself. So these are two reports that Gaia has um, uh, launched. So we have Rejecting Single-Use Plastic in Asia and then the Zero Waste City Manual. So basically trying to educate yourself uh doon talaga nagsisimula yung change because hindi you won't understand something 
unless mapag-aralan mo siya. And you cannot... Um, kasi ang goal natin is to raise awareness and influence others. So you won't be able to influence others if if the topic that you're trying to talk about ay hindi mo rin naiintindihan on a personal level. So we have to educate ourselves then. Yeah? Uh, yeah, so this one, just try to get involved and don't get intimidated sa pag-sign ng mga petitions. And then next one. Ayun. Exercise your right to vote, your freedoms of speech, and to organize. So we have the freedom to ex express ourselves in social media, in conversations. Uh, sa mga bagay na uh, sinishare natin sa iba. So, piliin natin yung piliin natin mag-share ng something that is credible na alam natin na uh, uh, credible yung sources natin. Hindi siya galing lang sa TikTok or galing lang sa YouTube. We want to, you know, um, there is what they call in journalism uh, triangulation of information. So, yung triangle, it has three sides. So, if yung isang news lumabas, you have to check it first to two other sources. So, you have to get three sources na credible for you to be able to conclude na, uh, yes, tama yung facts na to pala. So, uh, that is what we call data triangulation. So, that is something na we can share to others or we can practice sa school or sa sarili natin or we, when we're trying to research. So, yung freedoms of speech and freedom to organize, they they come with responsibilities. Um, and ayun, responsibility natin na alamin na tama yung sinishare natin sa iba. And then make sure na worthwhile yung information. So, um, dinidiscourage ko yung pagiging marites. Um, uh, so, if makikipag-usap lang naman tayo, or if we're gonna share something, uh, sana it's something that's helpful to society. Uh, yung, uh, you know, a, a lot of things are urgent right now. Uh, even yung... Even yung uh, freedom natin uh, uh, with, the, with the election result. So it's a bit scary. Uh, so as long as the information that we're sharing is uh, correct and it's the truth, um, definitely um, yun dapat yung ginagawa natin. So the future is 52. This is an initiative by Greenpeace. Uh, so not not hindi lahat ng youth ay nakakaboto na ngayon. So, yung hindi pa 18 and above who are not yet registered voters, uh, there's still something that you can do. Um, your parents are voters. Um, a lot of your relatives and the people in your circle can vote. So, may, may bosses kayo. Um, you can still influence them. Uh, even if ikaw mismo, hindi ka pa nakakapagboto. So uh, it's your generation. Like for example, if we screw up with climate change, it's it's the youth who are going to experience it longer than the generations before you. So it's it's just vital na pag-usapan niyo yung future niyo din. So ayun next. Uh, ayun um. As I've mentioned earlier, don't get intimidated by mga uh, malaking conferences, by uh, political leaders. So we have uh, the ASEAN Summit. Uh, so doon pinag-uusapan yung policy, even election, even yung uh, Philippine government. You know, um, may mga directory sila online. If you go to their website, they have... Um, the email address is there. They have the phone numbers there. Um, even whatever age you are, you have the power and you have the freedom to email and call them out. So uh, 
uh, pag may nilabas na batas yung gobyerno or yung mga leaders natin, um, uh, you have every right to to call them out or to send a letter or an email or a message na, hey, you know, um, I don't really support this or, hey, uh, ito yung mga pwede nyo pang gawin. So, definitely, uh, that is something that you can explore. Um, ginagawa ito ng mga ibang uh, youth groups. So, even as an individual, pwede pwede mo siyang gawin. Next. All right. So number five is, um, ito. Uh, this was during the pandemic. So this was the zero waste community pantry. So um, basically, uh, I'm encouraging you na you know um, practice zero waste as an individual, but also share that wisdom and that experience to other people. So it's always good to be compassionate. Uh, Kung, kung meron kang extra and then share it with others, uh, uh, yun lang. Um, highlighting on less packaging on more reusables. Uh, kahit yung mga, um, mga bottles or plastic bottles niyo sa bahay, you can share it with other people uh, like um, para pwede rin nilang ma-reuse. Ayan. Number six is composting. So it's very, very basic. It's something na kaya natin gawin even with a small space. Um, may mga composting kits online actually that are being sold. So ka- pwede kang mag-compost even if you live in a, let's say, a small apartment uh, if you get those composting kits. Next. Ayun, um, it takes a network. So basically, um, you can do uh, some things on your own, but collectively, you can create a change. So get involved with um, organizations if there are. If wala pa, definitely you can make one. Um, ako, naniniwala ako that um, every uh, bawat kabataan may potential na maging leader. And ang kailangan lang is that space and that environment uh, which is supportive of them. So, ayun, um, let's support one another. Uh, and then let's collectively um, ayun, uh, address our future and make it, uh, make sure na it's, we're going to live in a healthier environment. Ayun. Uh, I think it's exciting, uh, very exciting to see the faces here and looking forward na ikokontinue no ang pag-aaral sa ganitong, uh, ganitong topic or advocacy. It doesn't have to be environment. Just getting involved and having your voice heard is already a change na impactful to society. Uh, ayun lang. Um, so, uh, we are Gaia. You can check our uh, social media, our, our website. Nandun yung mga iba't ibang pwede nyong basahin, resources. Uh, or, if you have any questions, you can ask it now. Or, if wala now and meron later on, you can email me at, uh, at my email address here. Ayun, thank you so much. Yan, thank you po. There is no planet B, whether we are consumers or producers, we are all people who take responsibility in the planet that we live in. Thank you so much po ulit, Ms. Pilora, for that wonderful talk. Your discussion po has been really meaningful and I know you have questions, but please save them for our Q&A session later. As for my thoughts, I know about this issue, but... It's not that much. Kaya upon encountering Ms. Carell's presentation, nakagulat talaga yung details and lalo na yung pinakita yung statistics. It heightened my my sense of urgency to act upon it. And I hope na ganun din for our dear listeners using the ways and practices that our speaker has provided to have us to have us help and raise awareness about this issue. 
at dahil may letter ay sa gaya, may tatlong ay ako for this career. Inspiring, informative, and impressive. At dahil the word way starts with the letter W, may tatlong W din ako. Wow, wow, wow. How <laughs> fuck. I love your determination na gumawa ng mga initiatives at a very young age kasama ang iba pang mga kabataan sa buong mundo. It establishes talaga na the youth is the hope of our nation. We just need to empower them more to nurture their potential into developing a worthwhile and better future for all of us. Di ba, Maggie? Tama, Jewel. Grabe, ah. Future Miss Carl ka na ba? Okay, so now, kamustahin natin ang ating live viewers. So, sa ating live viewers on Facebook and YouTube, we're hoping na okay pa kayo dyan and marami rin kayong natututunan sa ating webinar ngayon. This doesn't end here because now, let me introduce our next and last speaker for today. He is a youth leader from San Pablo City, Laguna, who primarily advocates for an empowering community for the youth and persons with disabilities along with an elevated campaign for health education in pursuit of increased accessibility and inclusivity of various health programs for the Filipino youth. He is also a public speaker who aims to empower the youth in its pursuit of a strengthened collaboration with its local communities and beyond through various community building and humanitarian projects. He is the founder and chief executive of the Alliance of Public Health Advocates, a nonpartisan youth serving organization in San Pablo City, Laguna, that aims to move for a progressive and inclusive healthcare system with the collaborative efforts of the San Pablenio Group. Grabe yun, Maggie. By your description, he sounds like a very amazing man. So, ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome Mr. Samuel C. Madriaga and let us give him a warm round of applause. Hello po! Hello everyone, good afternoon. So thank you so much for the introduction, Maggie and G. Well, no. So thank you again for having me in this afternoon. So for today, um, nakikinig din ako kanina and I was actually inspired, no. Ulitin ko lang siguro yung sinabi ng speaker natin kanina. Do, do not be afraid, no. Kahit na mga kabataan tayo, we have the power to push for reforms, especially right now, no, na lumalawak na yung population natin, even in the voting population, di ba? We cover... Um, lagpas ng half of the voting population ng Pilipinas. So we have, we are the future. So kailangan i-claim na natin yun right now, especially in the field of the health sector. So allow me lang to share my screen. Okay. Ayan, kita nyo na ba siya ngayon? Yes po, sir. Okay, sige. Thank you so much. So what I will be talking about this afternoon is about Um, medyo gawin natin dramatic ng konti. So it's about PC ng pag-asa. No? How do we take perspectives on the Philippine health systems post-COVID-19? Because uh, when Yanni actually chatted me, sinabi niya sa akin na ang topic daw is about the post-COVID-19 um, recovery ng bansa. So um, as a person, as a young health champion no, in San Pablo City, how can we take perspectives no, sa um, continuous um, pursuit natin of our recovery amid the COVID-19 pandemic? And uh, how how can we transition? No? Back, makakabalik pa ba tayo? dun sa normal phase natin before or are we welcoming talaga ha, now parang a new phase na of how we approach yung healthcare system natin in the Philippines. So before I start, I would like to ask every one of you, you may chat using our chat room dito sa Zoom. Um, from 1 to 10, do you feel safe and healthy? Siguro 10 yung pinaka safest talaga at saka healthiest yung nararamdaman mo right now. Siguro one kapag ka hindi ganun ka safe and healthy yung nararamdaman mo. So can I see some numbers dito sa ating chat room? Sige, let's see. Six. Okay, say kay John Ray. Meron pa ba tayo mga numbers here? Seven. Okay, parang <laughs> mga seven yung mga safe numbers. Eh, no? Sige. Um, boost lang natin. I want to know ano yung perspective ng Canosa College um, students natin. No? In terms of um, their perception or their perspective of how they feel safe and healthy. Especially right now with, me, with the community and society that we have. So may eight tayo. Wow. Okay. May magna nine ba or ten? Five? Okay, sige. Um, Despite the numbers no, na, nara, na sinayad nyo ngayon and the feeling that you are feeling right now, no, especially right now na nasa post-election na tayo na face, no, I hope that you're all safe pa rin and I hope that you're continuously seeking ways no, in order for you to become healthy at your home. So, kinakailangan natin yan. No, kasi uh, marami pa tayong gagawin din. Marami pa tayong mga activities, especially you guys because you are all student leaders. So, balikan lang natin. Ano yung nangyari so far? No? Kasi... 
ngayon masyado na focus yung attention natin with the elections eh. I'm sure you're all uh, kumbaga elevated yung participation nyo with the elections. Pero gusto ko lang ulit i-remind tayong lahat kung ano nangyayari sa atin in our health sector, particularly how we handle the pandemic. No? Currently, we have 3,687,428 COVID-19 cases in the Philippines. This is as of um, May 11 according to the Department of Health. Um, in terms of the active cases, we have 3,328 as of May 11. This is um, according ulit sa DUH natin and up to you whether you will believe it or not. Pero yeah, ganun yung bilang natin right now despite all the rallies, despite all the um, the activities that we have done um, during the campaign period ng elections natin. And fortunately naman, Nagkaroon din tayo ng 3,623,661 recoveries as of May 11. And in terms of mortality or yung mga deaths natin, we have 60,000 plus. So you may check yung COVID-19 tracker natin sa Department of Health website. Okay? So ano nangyari sa Pilipinas? Um, sana hindi kayo makampante because according to the experts, meron tayong inaasahan pa or meron tayong parang um, nilulook forward. Sana hindi matuloy, pero this is a probable case for the Philippines na after ng election, we could, we might experience no, a COVID-19 case surge. So maaring bumalik ulit tayo sa lockdown phase natin and sana hindi naman masyado. Pero um, kapag bumalik yon kamusta ba yung naging response so far ng Philippines? Are we ready enough? Right now, na two years or three years na tayo nasa pandemia. Have we shown resiliency? Have we shown preparedness in handling the pandemic so far? Um, unfortunately, hindi pa. Uh, ito yung isang lumang article naman siya, but this is according to 2021 lang. So last year lang siya. We rank uh, 52nd among that 53 countries no globally na among the um, parang pinaka-resilient na country. So, pang 50 second tayo. Second to the last tayo sa pinaka-hindi resilient sa COVID-19 pandemic. In terms of our health insurance programs and policies na nakaka-apekto sa kung paano masusustain at matutulungan yung financial capacities ng mga Pilipino to handle all the necessary medicines, services, and to access different um, programs from the, from the government and private institutions related to healthcare, Nagkaroon pa tayo ng problema natin in one of our institutions, namely PhilHealth, na kung saan they were actually accused of 15 billion fraud and other allegations pa. Sinasabi pa dito na yung pondo natin para matulungan yung mga Pilipino na maka-access ng mga healthcare services, maaari pa itong maubos by 2022. So this is actually a big problem for us, no? na lalo na na bumababa yung um, confidence ng mga tao in our health um, governing institutions right now. At saka, bumababa na rin yung kumpiyansa natin. Kasi ang problema natin with PhilHealth, ayaw ng mga tao with, with this kind of allegation, no? hindi na yung mga tao bumababa na yung rate ng pagbibigay nila ng pondo sa PhilHealth. Na mag, uh, kasi meron tayong niririn yung parang membership fee. No? For us students, 300 yung minimum. So yun yung binibigay natin sa PhilHealth para kumbaga, magkaroon tayo ng insurance. Then makareceive natin yung mga insurance as programs na bahagi sa provision na yun. But unfortunately, dahil sa nangyaring to, bumababa yung kumpiyansa ng mga tao. Moreover, on the positive side siguro, Uh, we have started to welcome na rin yung COVID-19 vaccines. This, um, despite yung mataas na vaccine hesitancy ng mga Pilipino, no? pero currently we are now siguro entering the phase ng pagkakaroon ng second dose ng booster. Uh, we do not know yet, pero meron ng balita na yung ngayon sa Manila na magsistart na rin sila. No? So nagkaroon din tayo ng ganun in order for us to prevent the greater cases of mortality and morbidity ng, um, related to COVID-19. And yun, pinaka-familiar sa lahat of how the government responded in terms of our healthcare problem, um, lockdowns, community quarantines. Diba? We, are, we have been in a community quarantine for so long na tayo na yung tinawag na world's longest lockdown na nagpapasinaya na isang country. No? So very common sa atin, especially sa government natin, na when, they, when there's a surge, ng COVID-19 cases in the in a locality, in the community, or a, a nation as a whole, magkakaroon tayo ng lockdown and community quarantine. Now, with all of these issues and problems, what's left for the Philippine health system? Anong natitira pa sa atin? Um, what should we look forward to? No, In our pursuit for greater recovery and effective um, health system strengthening, ano pa yung pwede natin i-look forward? Currently, just to give you an idea, no, we have scarcity of health resources, may high infection rate among healthcare workers, particularly before pa ito, no, nagkakaroon tayo ng mataas na COVID-19 surge, which might also happen kapag ka magkakaroon tayo ulit ng surge post-election. 
pangalawa, may deeper contraction tayo of the economy. Um, as you all know, no, um, we are entering gradually, parang entering na tayo ng stagnation. When we stay stagnation, ito yung high inflation rate sa Pilipinas, sa bansa natin, meaning slow at saka slow yung economic growth natin ng bansa natin. So may deeper contraction tayo ng economy natin, which might affect then kung paano tayo makapag-provide ng enough resources, resources, services para sa ating mga kapwa Pilipino. Maaring makang mahulugan nito ng mataas na halaga ng servisyo at saka ng mga medisina at teknolohiya um, regarding um, na pumapatungkol no, sa kalusugan and poor provision of job opportunities, particularly sa mga fresh graduates natin like nurses, mga allied medical professions, uh, maaring hindi sila makaharap ng trabaho enough dito sa Pilipinas. Also, um, very common sa atin, widespread misinformation and disinformation, nagiging frail yung information dissemination or information delivery systems natin in the country. Ngayon, panahon ng pandemya, hindi na alam ng mga tao kung anong paniniwalaan nila. Hindi nila alam kung anong katotohanan. Um, kumakalat yung mga balita na hindi naman totoo COVID-19. Kumakalat yung mga news and rumors na effective yung ivermectin in order for us to cure from the COVID-19 pandemic, di ba? So may mga ganong misinformation and disinformation at mas lalo siyang inexpose ng COVID-19 at nahihirapan tayo no, to combat yung fake news natin na lumalagyan sa society natin right now. Uh, meron din tayong incongruence of perception of government leaders natin to the national realities na meron tayo. When we say incongruence of perception, kumbaga, um, kadalasan na, na naniling natin sa balita, okay tayo, safe daw tayo, uh, we are handling the pandemic very well, but when you go on ground, your realidad is hindi ganun, di ba? Maraming mga Pilipino hindi maka-access or makapunta sa hospital, hindi sila gumagaling, iba na mamatay na dahil hindi sila nakaka-access ng mga serbisyo sa mga pribadong hospital at mismo sa mga publikong hospital natin sa Pilipinas. At lastly, Ah, hindi pala last to. Second to the last, yung brain drain natin ng healthcare workers. Um, in our professions, occupational therapy, by the way, I'm a, I'm a student of um, BS Occupational Therapy. Um, ang problema namin ngayon, as a parang soon to graduate na rin, hindi namin alam if we will stay in the Philippines, but we have a contract na pinirmahan niya sa UP Manila for us to serve in the Philippines for two years as an OT. No? Pero naka, dahil nagkaroon ng ganong kontrata ang UP Manila because nakakaranas tayo ng malawakang brain drain ng mga healthcare workers natin. Now, most of the healthcare workers natin, after graduation or even um, while, sta- while um, parang employing themselves no, dito sa bansa, umaalis sila ng bansa para makahanap ng better livelihood, livelihood opportunities to sustain yung lifestyle na meron sila. And ito yung mga problema natin. Nauubusan tayo ng mga doktor, mga nurses, mga magagaling na mga OTs, PTs, and SPs natin na kailangan-kailangan ng bansa para makabangon tayo. No? And lastly, which is a very sad thing, may heightened mistrust tayo. Yung population natin to the Department of Health and other governing agencies natin. If you would look at some Facebook posts ng DOH, no, makikita nyo doon, iba sa kanila hindi na naniniwala, iba sa kanila kinokontra kung sinasabi ng mga experts natin sa DOH. And there is something that we need to look forward na paano natin siya i-address? How can we build credible and strong institutions no, na kung saan yung mga tao yung maniniwala at makikisama sa kung paano natin i-build up ulit yung health systems natin Um, as we move forward or as we move forward no, mula sa COVID-19 pandemic. So, kinakikita natin, mostly nangyayari yung mga ganitong mga bagay because we have experienced yung linear thinking ng government natin on how they address yung mga healthcare problems natin, particularly sa COVID-19. Kapag tumataas, kung nakapapansin nyo, kapag tumataas yung COVID-19 cases natin in the country, nagkakaroon tayo agad ng immediate lockdown. And hindi ko lang ito sinasabi because of observation. This is actually published no, sa mga studies na meron tayo um, dito sa Pilipinas, locally. Kapag may COVID-19 cases tayo, one of the primary solutions of the government is to impose lockdown, to impose community quarantines. Kapag nagkaroon tayo ng mga lockdowns, siyempre magkakaroon tayo ng short-term ayuda, di ba? So, bibigyan tayo ng ayuda para mag-provide ng relief sa mga tao. When we lack ng mga resources na natin, kung narin nagkulang tayo sa resources natin, uh, hindi na kaya ng gobyerno na mga pag-provide ng ayuda sa milyon-milyong populasyon ng Pilipino, magkakaroon ulit tayo ng ease of lockdown. Sige, bahala kayo, magtrabaho na ulit kayo, bumili kayo ng mga sarili niyo mga pangailangan. Pero kapag nagkaroon tayo ng ease of lockdown, tataas ulit yung COVID-19 cases natin, babalik ulit tayo sa lockdown after. So minsan namimili na lang tayo eh no kung anong mga COVID-19 uh, kung anong community quarantine procedures or protocols si impose natin in the community di ba Pero this is a sad thing para sa atin because we have experienced itong linear thinking ng government natin um, especially right now during the COVID-19 pandemic and we see ourselves right here 
um, yung kanong sa college student council still conducting your um, project online, di ba? Kasi, um, hindi pa rin tayo totally nakaka-recover from the perils of the COVID-19. So, makikita natin dito, yung kakaya kailaka yung kailangan natin no na magkaroon ng isang panibagong approach or uh, pan, panibagong pagtingin no kung paano natin i-address yung mga healthcare problems natin here in the Philippines in order for us to fully recover from COVID-19 pandemic and sinasuggest ng World Health Organization meron silang health systems framework na kung saan this provide us another approach of how do we see yung health systems natin no ano yung mga factors na nakakaapekto no para matulungan yung mga tao matulungan yung gobyerno na ma-address mismo yung mga problema natin on ground at mabigyan tayo ng maayos na recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic as you can see here um yung mga maliliit na circles dito tinatawag natin sila na health systems building blocks okay kasi sila yung integral in um promoting the, and elevating the dignity of the people kung makikita niyo dito nasa sentro dapat yung tao kasi lahat lahat yung building blocks natin as we try to improve them kailangan people centered and rights based approach pa rin yung ginagamit natin no hindi natin dapat kailangan iniiwanan yung tao in the development of our health systems kailangan sila yung nasa sentro ng ating pamamahala ng ating pagbi-build ng ating health systems para mismo yung serbisyo ay dumadaloy talaga mismo sa communities natin, sa mga tao natin. Nararanasan mismo nila. So we have governance, just to briefly discuss siguro, no? Um, the first is governance. This is actually critical and vital no, sa health system strengthening natin. When we say health systems, ito yung um, different organizations, institutions, and even um, Um, para mga units natin na nagko-collaborate together no para ma-build at ma-strengthen yung health system natin or yung health sector ng isang bansa or ng isang community. Yung building blocks natin dito, they affect each other at inaapektuhan nila kung paano magiging effective yung delivery of healthcare services, um, yung response and resiliency ng isang bansa in addressing different healthcare problems and achieving different health outcomes. So, sana nagagets pa natin no, kung ano yung health system sa sinasabi natin here. But when we talk about health systems framework, isa ditong factor is yung governance. Yung governance, ito yung mga government natin, other institutions na nagpo-provide ng services at nag uh, nagpo-pondo sa mga programa na binibigay sa mga tao. So very critical sila. Sila nagpo-provide ng mga polisiya na makaka-apekto din mismo sa health system natin. When we say information, ito yung mga information na kinoconvey natin sa population in helping them realize ano yung mga dama na dapat nilang gawin, um, how can they improve yung mga health-seeking behaviors nila, how can we make the population become more informed no, para tanggapin yung mga servisyo na binababa ng gobyerno. Financing, in terms of financing, this is how we fund yung mga programs natin services, medicines, technologies natin necessary to improving the health of the people. Service delivery, ito yung mga programa, kampanya, yung mga advocacies natin na pinopromote natin at ginagawa o ini-implement sa mga lokalidad, sa mga communities natin at sa mga tao para ma-improve yung health outcomes mismo na tinatarget natin. Human resources, ito yung mga workforce natin na nagtatrabaho para i-provide yung mga services mismo at saka yung mga programa para sa kalusugan. At yung medicines and technologies, ito yung mga kunari, bakuna, gamot, yung mga uh, mobile health, yung mga ganong mga mga programa natin sila naman yung nagaano para maging katungga or mga instrument ng tao para gumaling sila or kumbaga mag-improve din yung health nila no so as you can see interrelated lahat ng mga building blocks natin here in the health systems framework and in order for you to further visualize paano sila nagwo-work no ito yung interrelationship nila no ito yung anim na system building blocks natin we need to have um, increased access and coverage and quality and safety to ensure na magkakaroon tayo na improved health in terms of level and equity of the distribution ng health services natin. Mas magiging responsive yung community natin to the needs of the people. Magkakaroon tayo ng social and financial risk protection na hindi maghihirap yung tao kapag ka naka-access siya ng health services from the government or from any private institution. Na kunwari makoconfine ka for one week dapat paglabas mo hindi naman sobrang hirap na yung magiging um, na hindi ka magkakautang hindi ka magkakaroon ng iba't ibang problema in terms of social and um, financial responsibilities so yun yung gusto nating mangyari no and ma-improve yung efficiency of how these building blocks work no for the good of the people okay so yun yung health systems framework na meron tayo now paano inapektuhan ng covid-19 pandemic yung health systems building blocks natin particularly in terms of service delivery So service delivery again ito yung pag-provide natin ng mga programa para sa tao, di ba? So yung mga lockdowns natin and community quarantines natin. So sobrang tagal niya, 
Nagkaroon tayo ng mga transport and border restrictions. Nagkaroon tayo ng high patient volume dun sa ating mga institutions like hospitals, mga primary care units natin. And yung fear of contracting COVID-19 pandemic, COVID-19 mismo, it negatively impacted no yung health-seeking behaviors and yung quality ng services na pinoprovide para sa mga Pilipino. According to kay Bayani and Tan, you may read, I will send siguro kay Yani na lang yung study on this one. No? Sila sabi dun, na negatively na impact yung health seeking behavior ng mga Pilipino kapag nang ngayon nagkaroon tayo ng COVID-19 pandemic. If you are familiar yung mga pagka kumakausap kayo, kunwari inuubo, sinisipon yung kausap nyo, pag sinasabi natin, uy magpa-check up ka na, baka kailangan natin, um, paano yan, ma- para malaman natin anong mga gamot ang pwede mong itik. Kunwari, hindi makahinga ng ayos or may sakit na nararamdaman siya, Kapag sinabi natin, kung magpa-check up ka na para sigurado tayo kung ano yung nararamdaman mo. Most of the time, sinasabi nila, ayoko magpa-check up kasi baka mamaya, i-diagnose lang ako, sabihin sa akin, COVID, na nagmeron akong COVID-19. Yung ganong fear yung na-inflict ng COVID-19 pandemic sa mga tao para mag-lessen yung health-seeking behaviors nila. And it actually affects yung health mismo nila. No? Um, this actually affects then yung mortality rate na meron tayo sa Pilipinas dahil, yun nga, hindi sila nakakasik ng proper healthcare services na kinakailangan mismo nila. According to studies kasi, 26% ang nag-decline ng 26% no, yung access ng mga tao to essential health services in the Philippines. Dulot ito ng yung resources natin bumuhos mismo in addressing the COVID-19 pandemic sa mga hospitals natin. Napuno yung mga hospitals natin, yung mga hospital beds, primarily to cater yung mga COVID-19 patients natin. Eh yung mga tao na may non-communicable diseases, stroke, cancer, hindi na sila napoprovide na ng enough and quality services na sa mga hospital dahil nakatoon tayo doon sa pagresolba sa COVID-19. And dahil dyan, bumababa lalo yung access ng mga tao na may non-COVID-19 related concerns sa mga healthcare services na kinakailangan nila para gumaling sila. And according to NEDA ng 2020, no? 38.5% Filipinos have experienced difficulties in accessing health facilities meron tayo sa Pilipinas. No? So this is a huge concern para sa atin kasi yung 38.5 million na yan, uh, 38.5%, milyong-milyong Pilipino yung nakakaranas niyan mismo. So in terms of healthcare service delivery pa, nag-increase yung trend natin ng referral systems. Na kung saan, kapag hindi kaya ng hospital na mag ng mga pasyente, na hindi nila kaya na pumasok sila sa institution mo para gumaling ka, ang ginagawa, nire-refer ka na lang sa ibang healthcare services or mis- minsan pa mobile health, di ba? Naka- sino nakaranas na siguro dito nung uh, magpapacheck up ka through phone sa mga doktor mo, pero ibabayaran mo pa rin siya through Gcash? Ganun yung nagiging norm natin ngayon. Pero paano naman yung mga communities na marginalized Um, from the marginalized sector, di ba, na walang access to technology, to internet, how can they seek for services mismo na nanggagaling sa mga experts natin tulad ng mga doctor at nurse, di ba? So, yun yung mga problema na kinakaharap natin right now during the COVID-19 pandemic na hindi nagiging inclusive at walang in- in- equitable distribution ng mga health resources para doon sa mga tao na nasa disadvantaged communities, no? Also, yung katulad na sinabi ko kanina, nagkaroon tayo ng increased mortality rate, no, among the patients that we have Uh, na may complica- complicated health conditions na hindi related sa COVID-19, katulad ng um, heart diseases, um, stroke, ng mga cancer. So hindi sila nabibigyan ng sapat na attention, no? Kaya nag increase lalo yung mortality rate. I do not know if you're familiar um, sa isang news before na kung saan, I think PWD siya, ginala niya yung mga hospitals in Manila para lang makasig siya ng services niya mismo. Pero in the end, hindi siya pinapasok ng mga hospital dahil puno na raw. Kasi puro COVID-19 patients sila sa hospital mismo. Ang nangyari dun sa tao, namatay siya in the end. So that's one of the realities na meron tayo on ground no? na kinakailangan pa rin nating solusyonan. So also, problema rin natin kasi nagkaroon tayo diba, ng mga travel pass na kinakailangan natin. So naging problema siya para sa mga tao na kinakailangan ng emergency, ng emer- um, ng immediate uh, medical attention ng mga emergency cases natin no so kailangan mo kumuha ng travel pass sa barangay para makatravel ka from province to province example dito sa San Pablo hindi naman ganoon kalawak yung services na binibigay natin dito na hindi ganoon ka um, effective minsan or outside na sa scope ng services na binibigay nila may mga kilala ko na stroke sila kailangan pandalhin sa Batangas sa Lucena para lang magumaling sila at kailangan pa nila kumuha ng travel pass para masolusyunan to so yun yung mga experiences na nararanasan natin on ground na realidad para masabi natin na meron talaga tayo mga problema in terms of how do we deliver yung mga health services para sa tao no? 
meron din tayo inequitable distribution ng mga health services, particularly sa mga um, geographically isolated areas, sa mga uh, indigenous peoples, communities natin, at sa mga tao na nasa low yung socioeconomic status doon, nahihirapan talaga sila na maka-access ng mga healthcare services kasi mahalang gamot, mahala magpa-doktor, mahala magpa-check up. In terms naman sa health information systems natin and workforce natin, nakakaranas din tayo ng mga problema dito. No? One of the studies actually said na Meron poor data collection na nangyayari and dissemination among the local sectors and communities no. Kasi most of the time yung mga health workforce natin, kunwari ako nurse ako. Um nurse ako sa isang uh, municipal health office. Eh minsan na ang gagawin ko lang is mag-swab, uh, mag-analyze ng mga ano doon, um na mag pag magmangalaga sa mga pasyente ko, ma-expand pa yung rule ko. Pwede akong mag um, magawa ng report pa, kailangan ko mang magpasa ng mga Uh, ng mga documents sa DOH para ma-update. Kailangan ko pa mismo mag-analyze minsan ng mga data. So, nagkakaroon tayo ng expansion of rules among our healthcare workers, no? Na nag-lead sa delay ng delivery ng, that's a delay, ng delivery ng healthcare and reports natin to appropriate agencies. At minsan, ang nangyayari pa sa mga local communities natin, nakakapag-hair tayo ng mga additional staff from the civil society na hindi naman sapat yung training para ma-address mismo yung mga health concerns natin. Particularly, kunwari, kailangan natin ng mga COVID-19 trace, um, yung mga contact tracers natin. Kailangan natin ng mga magsuswab, minsan ng mga ganun. No? Kailangan natin ng mga volunteers lagi. And yun, karoon, kakaroon tayo ng gaps in that um, in that sense. no And dito lumaganap din talaga yung activation ng mga barangay health units natin, yung mga, uh, mga BIRT na tinatawag natin, barangay health emergency response teams natin. So nag-expand talaga yung rules natin right now. At saka dahil sa dito, nagiging confused yung mga tao sa ano, ano yung tama. Ano yung dapat kong lapitan? Sino yung mismo yung expert? Sino yung mga credible, um, credible sources of information na maaari nating malapitan para matulungan tayo na ma-address yung mga issues natin and concerns on COVID-19, di ba? Nakakaroon din tayo ng inaccessible health information among marginalized sectors and communities. In our experience sa Alliance of Public Health Advocates, um, nakakausap namin yung isang, IDGSP, um, isang member ng IP in Rizal. Sinabi sa amin na, Bakit kami magpapabakuna eh hindi naman namin parang wala nang pumupunta dito para malaman namin kung ano yung COVID-19 vaccines. So, bakit kami magpapabakuna? Bakit kami magpapaturok? So, ayun yung mga nagdaranasan nating concerns, no? Kasi hindi nga equitable yung distribution mismo ng impormasyon sa mga tao and mostly ang naapektuhan lang naman dito at mas mo nakakapag-benefit kung sino yung mga nasa cities, yung mga malapit sa mga health institutions natin mismo. So, yung isang study, gumawa sila ng isang framework, no? na pinapakita ko ano yung effect or impact ng COVID-19 sa health systems ng Pilipinas. Makikita nyo dito, ito mismo yung health systems natin, yung health systems building block natin mismo. Tapos dito yung mga diseases that could be affected, including teenage pregnancy, maternal health, non-communicable diseases, at saka nandito rin yung short-term, medium, medium term, at saka long-term risk no? kapag hindi natin sila naagapan. Saka nandito, nakalagay din dito, ano yung mga disadvantaged population na maaring ma- Ma mag magkaroon ng problema no kapag lumala pa or kapag tumagal pa na hindi na sosolusyunan ng gobyerno yung mga ganitong concerns no so kailangan din nating maintindihan no in order for us to fully understand how could we fully recover from the COVID-19 pandemic merong mga factors na kakaapekto sa health systems recovery natin the first one I'm sure uh, maybe some of you are familiar with this one yung devolution of health system siguro mag-ask ako Or just chat nyo lang dito sa chat box natin. If you're familiar with the word devolution of the health system, pwede siyang i-share dito no? para we can actually learn from each other din at para malaman din ng mga kasama natin dito sa Zoom kung ano nga ba pag sinabi natin devolution of health system. Pero when we say devolution of health system, it means na decentralized yung mismong authorities or yung powers mismo na pag-provide ng healthcare services sa abansa natin. Meaning, hindi siya lang nakasentro lang basta sa DOH. Meron yung mga LGUs are empowered enough to create their own healthcare systems na makakatulong sa mga local communities nila. For example, sa atin sa San Pablo, may sarili tayong hospitals, may sarili tayong um, tayo mismo yung bahalang magpondo para masustain yung mga healthcare services, medicines, technologies na binibigay natin sa mga kapwa San Pablenyo natin. So when we say devolution, dinidecentralize mo, kinakalat mo yung kapangyarihan sa mga mas mababa na branches. Okay, sa mga LGUs yun, sa local communities. So, kailangan natin siya ma 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 maintindihan na paano nakaka-apekto yung devolution ng health system natin in our recovery. Dahil most of the time, our LGUs are not capacitated enough no, to respond to the different health concerns na meron yung constituents nila. Most of the time, 
hindi nila nabibigyan ng sapat na pondo at ng, uh, nilalaaran ng sapat na pagpapahalaga ang kalusugan ng mga kababayan nila sa local communities nila. Meron ako mga LGUs na kilala. Uh, ang ginagawa nila sa health nila health sector, sila yung pinakamababa pa na porsyente sa budget ng local government unit. And yun yung mismo nakakapagsama. Kasi yung devolution kasi nangyari to because of the local government code, no? na kailangan i-empower yung mga LGUs to create their own healthcare systems. So kailangan makipag-coordinate lang sila sa mga DU, sa DOH para ma-provide at mag-guide pa rin sila sa mga policy at sa mga services na pinoprovide nila sa tao. So yun yung nagiging problema nat- naman natin right now. And I am sure we have experienced the same, di ba, dito sa San Pablo City. Pangalawa, Universal healthcare implementation, hindi pa naman ganun kalawak yung access and yung coverage natin no in terms of the insurance policies and programs na meron tayo sa Pilipinas. For example, in terms of rehabilitation, nag-transition na tayo ngayon sa tele, tele-rehabilitation. Ako as an OT, um, wala pa rin na occupational therapy sa mga insurance program natin sa PhilHealth. So yung mga pasyente namin, sariling bulsa nila mismo nang gagaling. And kung hindi ka pa magpo-provide ng libreng healthcare services amid the COVID-19 pandemic, yung mga bata na, na, na may disability, maaaring hindi sila makapa, hindi nila ma-reach yung potential nila no para gumaling sila, para magawa nila yung mga dapat nilang gawin sa buhay nila at ma-reach nila yung mga potential and dreams nila. So, yun yung mga naging problema naman natin. Hindi pa ganun kalawak yung access and coverage ng UHC natin. Marami pa tayong kailangang i-work on this one. Um, also, yung behavioral impact ng, lo- la- lang, ng long community lockdowns natin and yung curative healthcare approach. Sa Pilipinas kasi, when we talk about our healthcare system, mamaya ipapakita ko sa inyo yung difference, no? When we talk about our healthcare system, curative tayo masyado. When we say curative, kapag may sakit na, sa lang natin actionan, sa lang natin gagalingin, sa lang natin pagagalingin. So, yung pag-approach natin sa COVID-19, di ba? Um, kapag nandito na, siya ka natin action. Pero pag wala pa, hindi wala muna. Open muna yung mga ports natin para sa iba't ibang mga nationalities. Pasok lang kayo ng pasok. Pero pag nandito na yung COVID-19, saka tayo magko-close ng mga barriers natin. Ganyan yung mga nagiging problema natin right now. No? Very curative yung approach natin to healthcare. And kailangan mabago. Magkaroon tayo ng paradigm shift no? to how we handle yung health systems natin in order for us to recover fully from the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, the question is, how do we recover from this? Ano yung kailangan natin maging approach? We need to look at the reality through systems thinking. Katulad na binigay ko sa inyo kanina, sinasabi ng World Health Organization, mahalaga na kailangan buuin natin at palakawakin natin mismo or ipatagin natin yung health systems natin no? through the building blocks na binigay mismo ng World Health Organization. Because the COVID-19 pandemic is a systemic problem that requires systemic solutions. Because yun nga, Katulad yung sinabi ko sa inyo kanina, yung linear thinking natin, lockdowns and guns would that actually help us recover from the pandemic. Concrete health solutions do. We do not need to militarize yung ating healthcare sector. Kila kailangan natin, experts-based, um, validated ng mga doktor natin, ng mga ating mga healthcare professionals, um, para makarecover mismo tayo sa ating um, COVID-19 pandemic. no. So also, mahalaga rin dito, katulad yung pinakita ko sa inyo kanina, good governance is key to effective health system strengthening. Walang blueprint para masabi natin kung ano yung tama at ano yung magandang health leadership and governance na kailangang maranasan ng mga bansa. Walang blueprint. If, I, if you will search for that, makakahanap kayo siguro ng mga templates lang ng mga good practices, pero wala talagang blueprint. Because um, in order for you to address it, kailangan kasi na Very contextualized kasi yung health sectors natin. For the Philippines, we have our, our own culture to consider, di ba? Meron tayong mga kultura na kinoconsider, may sarili tayong context na kailangan i-consider. Kaya kailangan dynamic din yung health leadership and governance natin. Kaya mahalaga na may accountability yung mga leaders natin. What we need right now in order for us to recover from the COVID-19 is what we need is a government that is capable and committed in promoting rights-based health frameworks for the Filipino people. At ano yung mga kailangan priority na susunod na administrasyon, no? Lalo, lang, lalo na ngayon, no? Tapos, patapos na halos yung election natin. Uh, we are slowly transitioning na to the new administration. But what should the priority of the Philippines be? Okay? So this is actually recommended by the World Health Organization, no? Una, kailangan yung next administration natin would develop people health-centered policies and frameworks by strengthening the Universal Healthcare Act. Kailangan palawakin natin yung access and coverage ng ating UHC, no? Para yung mga Pilipino, kapag nagsik sila ng medical health, ng healthcare, um, from the institutions, 
um, units nila sa mga barangay nila, sa kanilang local communities, sa mga hospital. Paglabas nila ng hospital, kailangan hindi pa rin sila maghihirap. That's the aim. That's the dream for the Filipinos, no? Na kailangan hindi masyadong financially, bur- na hindi maging burden financially yung healthcare system natin. Kailangan yung gobyerno mismo makapagbigay ito na kahit mismo libre ng mga healthcare services para sa ating bansa, no? Pero kailangan, iayusin natin yung budget and funding natin for this one. Pangalawa, Enforce equitable regulatory mechanisms in accessing medicines, services, and technologies. When we say regulatory mechanisms, kailangan maayos yung mekanismo ng gobyerno no, in regulating yung mga distribution ng ating mga medisina, ng mga teknolohiya patungkol sa kalusugan. Um, an example of this um, poor regulatory mechanism is yung nangyari sa Farmally. Diba? Um, yung formally, nagbebenta sila ng mga healthcare products tapos minsan minamahalan pa, diba? yung pagbebenta ng mga face mask, ng mga face shield. Nang naranasan natin sa COVID-19 pandemic, kaya mismo yung mga ibang tao, hindi sila bumibili ng face mask, nagkakaroon sa alo sila na mas at risk sila sa COVID-19. Diba? So kailangan may, may strong tayo na regulatory mechanisms no? to regulate mismo yung distribution natin at maging equitable yung distribution ng medisina para sa lahat ng mga tao, particularly sa mga GIDA natin or geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas natin na mga Pilipino na nakaritira sa mga ganong lugar. No? Pangatlo, as civil society, we need to seek greater accountability and commitment to monitoring and sustaining the efforts in strengthening our health systems. May part tayo no? bilang mga Pilipino. No? Kailangan we need, to great, we need to seek accountability from the administration, from the government mismo, lalo na dito sa local community natin. No? Na kailangan maging strong yung monitoring and sustaining efforts ng um, government natin para mapatatag mismo yung health systems natin. Dahil yung magbe-benefit naman doon, in the end, tayo rin mismo. And pang-apat, kailangan makapag-generate yung gobyerno o yung administration and makapag-apply ng mga expert-validated researches. According to the Universal Healthcare Act, uh, minamandate yung DOH at saka yung mga local units nito na magkaroon ng mga participatory action research. I don't know if natin si Jedrick, pero kasama ko si Jedrick in one of our PAR trainings. Um, minamandate na ngayon, currently ongoing yung um, yung programa nito ng DOH, sinimulan lang last year. So, in, 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 minamandate na kayo yung mga local health units natin no na magkaroon ng PAR or participatory action research no para yung 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 mga yung mga programa, yung mga solusyon mismo na ipapatupad ng mga health units natin manggagaling mismo sa community. Ang aim natin right now is that the solutions won't come from the healthcare provi- providers but rather dun sa community mismo, community designed, community developed. Kasi tayo mismo nakakaranas ng problema. Kinakailangan yung mga solusyon na ibibigay nila batay sa ating karapatan at batay sa ating pangangailangan. Okay? So mas mas kailangan mas lalo pa natin nating panatagan yung Philippine Health Research Agenda no para makarecover din tayo mula sa pandemyang ito. Ah uh, pang uh, pang lima, kailangan makapag-build tayo ng makapag-build tayo ng strong coalitions and partnerships no with private sectors and civil society groups. Um kinakailangan natin nito kasi makakatulong to sa funding natin. Uh, makakatulong to sa pagpa-distribute mismo ng mga services natin to different um, areas and marginalized sectors. And pang-anim, kailangan ma-strengthen yung implementation ng preventive health approach and frameworks. So yung sinabi ko kanina, one of the factors that could affect your recovery natin from the COVID-19 pandemic is yung pagkakaroon natin ng curative health approach. No? Kailangan na maging preventive tayo. Na kahit wala ka pang sakit, kailangan meron ng doktor na nag-aalaga sa'yo, may doktor na gumagabay mismo sa health-seeking behaviors mo, may mga um community health workers na mismo na kasama mo no para mas maging malusog ka. Ah, uh, yun ang kinakailangan natin sa Pilipinas kasi one of the things kaya siguro tayo hindi ganoon ka resilient at ka healthy kasi yung mga tao um magsisik lang sila ng healthcare kapag kami sakit na sila. So mababa kasi yung priority natin no in terms of healthcare. Nasa dulo kasi siya kasi mahal kasi hindi siya accessible kaya nasa dulo siya. Kaya ganoon lang tayo. Magsisik lang tayo ng healthcare services kapag na sakit na tayo. Pero kailangan mismo natin mabago yung framework na to. Kailangan mabago natin yung ganitong um, approach natin to healthcare into more a uh, preventive healthcare approach, no? This is how we empower the communities to become more healthy as well. So, siguro to make sense of what I am saying to you right now, gusto ko lang ipakita sa inyo yung secret ng Cuba sa effective health system nila. For for context siguro, Cuba is also a third world country, no? Katulad ng Pilipinas. Pero makikita niyo mismo sa video na ito, magkaibang magkaiba yung approach natin to healthcare. Um, allow me to share my screen lang siguro. Saglit lang naman 'to. Wait lang. Ha. Para siguro ma-inspire kayo at magkaroon kayo ng basis um kung ano nga ba dapat yung um paggayahan ng Pilipinas. Wait lang. Tell me na lang if nakikita niyo na. Kita niyo na ba? 
Uh, Maggie, Jewel, kita nyo. Yes po. Yes po. Okay, sige. I'll share this one na lang. Pinig nyo ba? Okay. La Vega. It's a typical Cuban sugar town. Most of the men work at the factory and live in apartments provided by the state. Their kids go to the local school and communist slogans are everywhere. Vega also has a pharmacy and a health clinic. Unlike almost anywhere else in Cuba, here there are no lines. They treat everything from motorcycle accidents to pregnancies. Both the doctor and the medicines are free. But Vega has something even more unusual, its very own guardian angel. Angelina is a family doctor. Two days each week, she walks house to house, checking up on everyone inside. She sees each of her 2,000 patients, even if they're healthy, at least twice a year. This may be why Cuba's infant mortality is on par with the United States. She also takes the time to discuss their lifestyles, relationships, and anything that might be causing them stress. The young boy can't take his eyes off her blood pressure cuff. A future doctor? Not unlikely. In Cuba, medical school is free. <laughs> Her last patient is schizophrenic and lives alone. Five days ago, she was dizzy, probably another episode. Something doesn't quite add up, and Angelina won't leave until she's figured out what's really going on. A random comment tips her off. Ayan, siguro stop po muna doon. Tapos balik tayo doon sa presentation ko kanina. Then I'll ask you guys, no? So, wait. Ano yung nakita niyo siguro? Um, siguro one or two people lang from our community here. Ano yung nakita niyo na interesting sa Cuba's healthcare system na nakita niyo kanina? Sige, Chef. Um, they help one another po and even they're really independent po to each another. Mm -hmm. So, tama yun, no? So, that's, uh, that's a good observation. Thank you, Chef. Ikaw naman, Ava. What I noticed in the video we just viewed is that um, there's a doctor that um, checks up on everyone kahit po hindi po siya nababayaran po. True, diba? So, ay, meron pa ba? May mga observations pa ba tayo na gustong i-share for the whole class tuloy? <laughs> so, buong ano natin, here, participants natin here, baka meron pa kayo nakita. Ah, sige, Jel, last si Jel. Uh, from the video po, I have observed that health or anything related to health po, to the Cuban people po, it is free and does not need payment po. In fact, they consider health as very important and doesn't need any value to compensate the services po. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much, Jel, for it. Sa isa tatlo na nagsalita, no? So do you see this as, as ideal? Gusto nyo ba siyang mangyari din sa Pilipinas? Oh, siguro thumbs up na lang if yes. Tapos thumbs down kapag satisfied na kayo with the health system natin here in the Philippines. So do you see this one as an ideal framework or parang template natin or blueprint para sa isang health system sa isang bansa na third world country din similar with the Philippines? Um, to give you a more perspective siguro, I will be sharing with you a YouTube link no, na pwede nyo... Um, Panoorin, 17 minutes lang yan. After na lang siguro nung talk ko. But this is um, a YouTube video comparing the health systems of Philippines and Cuba. Na isa, 
uh, free and mga healthcare services na pinoprovide nila. Well, in the Philippines, the Filipinos actually go to the streets, uh, pinaglalaban pa kung ano yung karapat nila para sa, sa healthcare, yung mga nurses natin naglalakad pa sa kalsada para lang ipaglaban kung ano yung mga karapatan at benefits nila. That's the difference that we have. So parehas tayong third world country but we have different approaches into healthcare into healthcare systems no and that is what we need no dito sa ating um sa lugar natin sa bansa natin dito sa ano in order for us to recover fully kailangan natin slowly mag-adapt no maghanap tayo ng mga blueprints from other countries that we can effectively adopt similar with Cuba ang ginagawa nila very less yung mortality rate sa kanila dahil very preventive yung approach nila may community doctor na lumalapit sa bahay-bahay. We do have that program naman here in the Philippines. No? Yung um, Doctors to the Barrios program, meron tayo nun. Pero for GDA, at saka yung mga marginalized communities lang yon. Pero in, on a day-to-day basis, no? imagine may doctor na pupunta sa'yo para i-ask ka, makikinig talaga sa'yo kung ano yung mga problema mo sa health bibigyan ka ng mga recommendations. Your medicine is free. Uh, pwede, libre kang mag-med school, di ba? So, Isipin nyo, how, how flourishing and how parang thriving yung health systems mismo nila, no? And kailangan natin yan sa Pilipinas. Kailangan natin i-increase yung access natin and coverage natin, no? Ng health systems natin and health services natin in the country. As observed from Cuba, meron sila, binroaden nila yung range of benefits to all of its citizens, no? Even yung sa, sa VEDA na napanood nyo kanina. VEDA is actually para siyang communist na um, inflicted area pa rin. Pero talagang all citizens are provided with healthcare um, programs and benefits mismo. Medicines, services, um, healthcare professionals mismo. Extended yung access to wider population and even the marginalized. Ito yung katotohanan ng universal access, universal healthcare mismo. Pangatlo, nakapag-provide siya sa citizens niya ng social protection against challenging financial and social consequences. Kapag binanood niyo yung video na sinan ko sa inyo ngayon lang, Makikita nyo doon na yung mga tao sa kanila, ang focus na lang nila kapag ka nagbabudget sila, pagkain, bahay. Wala na iba. Hindi na naman siya nila ang focus ang kalusugan. Bakit? Kasi provided by the state, provided by the government na kung ano yung mga pangangailangan nila sa kalusugan. And as a country na meron namang budget, I know that we can do that as well. Kaya malaki ang magagawa ng mga kabataan. No? Pang-apat, they see health kasi as a social priority. Not just as a mere advocacy. Hindi lang siya basta advokasya na kailangan mo isulong araw-araw, kailangan mo ipaglaban. Ang kalusugan para sa kanila ay napakahalaga. Kaya yung gobyerno mismo, sila na pag provide ng health services na deserving para sa tao to uplift their dignity as Cuban people. And we hope na mangyari din yan sa atin. So how do we make sense of all this? No, We need to use um, the adversity that we have felt from the COVID-19 pandemic as a pivotal ground to seek for greater accountability sa ating government institutions no kailangan this is the time where the youth could, should actually participate no in calling for um, a more effective health systems dito sa ating local community and even the country no we need to forge constructive engagements no with our governing institutions by lobbying the concerns of strategies and policies for the people marami tayong magagawa bilang kabataan you may join different organizations like alpha like um, national organizations, meron positive youth development network, meron tayong mga ganong mga organizations in which you can actually join, no? Para matulungan natin yung mga kapwa nating Pilipino, ma-elevate mismo na maging malusog sila at maging maglist, mas ligtas, no? Now, by the time na magsalita ulit ako sa inyo or magsalita ang isa man sa inyo, no? Now, when we ask the Filipino people or the Filipino youth, um, are you feeling safe and healthy? Most of the answers that we will actually get is 10, di ba? It's the dream, di ba? Para sa ating lahat. And, Yeah, we need to strengthen right now pala the building blocks of our city's health systems. No, Kami sa Alpha, may ginagamit kaming framework for action. Sinasabi dito, ina-encompass namin from the interpersonal level up until the sphere of governance, kailangan may actions tayo na ginagawa. Bilang mga kabataan, may magagawa tayo to amplify evidence-based health information, to come to procure inclusive, innovative, impact-based health initiatives, to forge a unified and collaborative health environment, and to promote and lobby effective health policies and promotion strategies para sa gobyerno natin. And we invite you as well no, to join us in this cause, to join us in this movement no, for a pro- more progressive and healthier San Pablo. No? And yeah. Uh, meron kami mga iba't iba na programs na ginagawa sa kasalukuyan at which may, might interest you. No? Whether you're an accountancy student, whether you're from STEM, from um, from GAS, or anumang strand niya pinakabibilangan nyo, um, basta para sa kalusugan, open tayo para sa lahat. No? So, kasi ang kalusugan pang lahat lang naman ay matatamo lang natin kung kikilalanin natin ang bag ng bawat isang Pilipino para sa ating pagbangon. Um, even si Jewel, if hindi siya masyado interested sa health, as long as you want 
to feel that you are healthy and you want to feel safe, you may join different health advocacies and causes. Mga, lahat ng ambag nyo ay makakatulong, no? Kasi right now, kailangan natin lang persa ng kabataang Pilipino para mabago natin yung health systems natin, mapush natin yung inclusive and sustainable health reforms for the country and for the Filipinos. Because our involvement in the health sector is a significant impetus in inflicting sustainable health reforms and we have the power to help shape yung um, health leadership natin sa bansa natin. And we invite you sana, nasamahan kami ang Alpha no, sa push namin na San Pablo Youth Health Agenda by 2020 this year until 2025. No. Sisimulan natin to. No. Unti-unti natin, babaguhin. Na. Similar with Cuba sana, unti-unti na maranasan ng mga kabatayang San Pablo nyo kung paano maging malusot, mas maging malusog, mas maging ligtas at mas maging secure no, in our local communities despite all the adversities that we are actually feeling right now. Um, so yun, Uh, patuloy natin, um, inaasahan ko na ang kanong sa students ay mga kiisa sa pag-angat ng ating ambag para sa kabataan, ng kabataan para sa kalusugan ng ating bayan. Maraming maraming salamat and you may further contact me if you would like to connect more and if you would like to ask more for para sa mga health advocacies ng Alpha, feel free to contact me lang dito sa mga social media sites na or parang accounts ko rin. Thank you so much. Ayan. So thank you so much po, Sir Samuel, for a very significant and empowering talk. Ako personally, hindi po ako masyadong updated sa kalagayan ng public health in the country. Pero that doesn't mean na uh, pinipilit kong hindi talaga maging aware. And with the presentation of Sir Samuel na very informative, mas na-increase ang sense of urgency ko kasi napakadami ding aspects na naaapektuhan. Kumbaga, we are not only facing a pandemic but also an infodemic kung saan madali ang ma-disinform at ang ma-misinform. So, Sir Samuel also talk about the COVID-19 cycle kung saan mapapaisip talaga tayo na, ah, oo nga, paulit-ulit lang yung nangyayari magmula nung magkaroon ng pandemic. And nalaman din natin na ang COVID-19 pandemic takes its toll on the health service, health service deliveries which really becomes a threat to the health of the people and mortality rate ng bansa, which is why the building blocks of the health systems framework should always be centered on the people. With this, I am sure that all of us are well informed about the terrifying realities that need immediate action. Again, Sir Samuel, emphasize the truth within the public health system of our country, which I think wakes the mind and willingness of the youth to be part of the solution in battling the horrors of our public health. Everything that Meg said is really true. So, Facebook and YouTube Kenosian listeners, pakigalaw ng baso kung buhay pa kayo. If ginalaw nyo, then that's good. It means na nakinig kayo sa enlightening presentations of both speakers and have stayed with us up until this point. And so, We would like to take the time to award the certificates of appreciation to our two remarkable speakers for the event. The certificate of appreciation is hereby presented to Ms. Carol Pelora in recognition for their invaluable efforts and insights as resource speaker rendered at the Canosian Kano Crusaders sailing through inclusivity and discovery. Given this 12th day of May 2022, by a Zoom teleconference signed by Azul Avriel C. Abisilia, Student Welfare and Development Chairperson, Leslie Joy D. Magdame, the President of the Conosa College Student Council, and by Trisha Yanni C. Brion, the Partnerships and Advocacy Chairperson. This Certificate of Appreciation is hereby presented to Mr. Samuel C. Madriaga in recognition for their invaluable efforts and insights as resource speaker rendered at the Notion Crusaders, sailing through inclusivity and discovery. Given this 12th day of May 2022 via Zoom teleconference, signed by Asel Abriel Abisilia, Student Welfare and Development Chairperson of the Canosa College Student Council, signed by Leslie Joy B. Magdame, President of the Canosa College Student Council, and Trisha Yanni C. Brion, Partnerships and Advocacy Chairperson of the Canosa College Student Council. Once again, the Council would like to express our gra deepest gratitude to you, Ms. Caril Pilora and Mr. Samuel C. Madriaga, and of course to our dear attendees. 
this event wouldn't be possible without all of you. So now we will be proceeding to our Q&A session. If you have further clarifications or questions for our speaker, feel free to send your questions together with the name of the speaker you would like to ask in the chat box and one of them will be the one to answer it. Actually, Maggie had to say that we don't have much time for our Q&A session. So if you have any questions, feel free to contact uh, any of our speakers because they have already given their contacts. And so we will proceed to our photo opportunity. So we are asking everyone to turn on their cameras for a photo opportunity. Thank you, if possible. Guys, please turn on, turn on your cameras para makapag-picture tayo. Hint lang muna natin yung iba na magbukas. Baka nagpapaganda pa sila sa likod ng camera. Okay. Paganda na din tayo. Okay. So, wala na atang nagbubukas ng camera. So, let's take a picture. One, two, three. Again, uh, one more time po. One, two, three. Yan, thank you po so much for turning on your cameras. You can turn them off now po. And now. With this, we will now be saying goodbye to our fellow Voyagers in today's event. Once again, this has been your host, Jewel Referrer. And Maggie Panganiban reminding you to sail beyond your learnings and find your advocacies. Thank you, everyone, and have a great day. Bye. Bye, Paul. Thank you, Paul.